Howdy y'all, and welcome to the Join Dota League Season 5. This is going to be a best of two series between Boreal Esports and Lunatic Esports. It should be pretty interesting, although Boreal very heavily favored as far as their group is concerned, all things considered, but then again, last season in the Join Dota League, a subpar performance from them, definitely not living up to expectations. We'll have to see if Boreal are going to be able to come back into this game. Looks like they are running with one stand-in, currently tagged as... Pudge hooks you, or something along those lines. His name is Monster, and they'll be playing with him today, so we'll just have to see. As far as Lunatics are concerned, I actually haven't seen them play very much at all, and it uh, should be an interesting experience. As far as the early bans and what have you are concerned, I'm not sure it really surprises anybody that we see Axe and Juggernaut taken out of the pool, and the Centaur ban also looking pretty comfortable, but really not much else to talk about as of now. I suppose... In the time being, we can take a look at the current standings inside the Join Dota League. Actually, an Ogre Magi ban, that's quite interesting coming up from Lunatics. Although it's something that's definitely worth running every once in a while, I don't think he's inside that top one or two pick slot as he once was. And the Ventral Sphere probably would have been a more stable ban, especially against Boreal, one of their more favorite openers. They do like running that Ventral Spirit quite a lot, and for good reason, too. Offers a lot of utility for the team with the defensive swaps, with the ability to go easier into the Roshan pit, especially if you have that wave maxed out, and on the Dire side especially, it really feels like there's just not anything that really compares to that then. So it would be interesting to hear what Lunatics would have to say about that Ogre, or maybe they have some sort of insider information, but as a general rule, I think that Ogre probably could have been left in the pool and... Band out later on if they really feel he deserves it. Jakiro going to be first pick for Lunatic, so maybe the start of a really aggressive pushing strategy for them. If it's picked up so early, it's probably going to be played as a core, giving some extra farm to Jakiro is always nice, giving you a nice way to open up fights with Yule Scepter and Ice Path, or getting a mechanism to help you barrel down those towers, but still a fairly versatile hero that doesn't necessarily mandate going into that very aggressive pushing style of play. Jakiro does work pretty well in most lineups, offers a nice bit of utility and AoE control, which is never really a bad thing to have. We'll just have to see what Lunatics are going to uh, follow that up with, but I suppose I will go uh, now and check out what's going on, at least inside the <clears throat> this group of the joint Dota League. I believe it's America 2-2. Yeah, it looks like that is the case. Currently, Boreal sitting at 2-0, and zero, and Lunatics at 1-1, one and one. so now your team really slouching. It's going to be a second pick Witch Doctor for Lunatics, and Boreal going to instantly snap up the True Warlord, wasting no time in thinking of these next couple of picks for their teams, and both teams are also getting a decent amount out of this when it comes to their utility. I quite like Boreal's opener, however, it's very scary. Their access to Roshan Pit is very easy, they can fight early and often, and then transition well throughout most of the game. It's actually surprising, at least to me, that Boreal leave in the Faceless Void for Lunatics. With the Jakiro and Witch Doctor, they already have a lot of heroes, or a lot of spells, to throw into that Chronosphere and offer a lot of damage, and they are going to give respect to the Omni Knight, which could very well be disrupted for the True Warlord, but... Uh, yeah, not exactly sure which one of these heroes you leave out. The Venomancer would also fit very nicely in the Lunatic's side, but I think that Faceless Void would fit nicely here for them. Bristleback going to the band coming out from Lunatic's, another one of those brawling heroes that's really darn scary to go up against. Comboing very nicely with the Troll and Vengeful Spirit, a lot of physical damage coming out from those three, and could have been very problematic for them to deal with. Jukiro, especially... If he's in a dual lane or by himself, really can't zone out that bristle back alone. Doom going to be the next pickup for Lunatics, and an interesting pick of the too. It is a hero that's seen every once in a while, but honestly, I'm not sure if this is the time. I think the Boreal might be able to really capitalize on the fact that Doom really just doesn't offer much in the laning stage. Although he's usually able to float through it, devour a couple creeps here and there, get that extra bit of farm going. As far as his counter push and actual contributions pre-level 6 or even after level 6, it's pretty limited. You kind of want to wait until Doom gets up some semblance of farm, gets a minus, gets a blink, before he actually starts accomplishing much of anything. So there definitely is a weakness for Boreal to exploit there, but then again, Doom is an amazing spell and can be very threatening. But then again, maybe not for the likes of the Shadow Fiend. The farm Shadow Fiend doesn't care that much about being Doom. Still right-clicks like a beast, and right now I... Quite favorite Boreal's lineup, it's very, very scary to go up against, and their lanes. Although you can roam and gank onto a Shadow Fiend with a Witch Doctor plus one, there's always that fallback mechanism, and Boreal really do have a lot of ways to abuse the map and make good use of it. They have good ways to farm the jungle, they have good ways to take out Roshan, and... Well, this is a little bit problematic for them. I think the Lunatics definitely need 
some way to actually punish this SF and combo with the Witch Doctor actually get those kills. Even though Witch Doctor is definitely a potent ganker, it's not an end-all be-all and can't actually do much by himself. But combined with another hero, definitely can make a lot of work happen. Not sure what that exactly is going to be for Lunatics. Feels like their draft right now is just a little bit all over the place. Uh, not really all over the place, but it's not really tied together or as focused as Boreal's is. So we'll just have to see where they're going to end up with it. Well, 49 seconds left of reserve time for Lunatics, and we'll just have to see what it's going to be. It's going to be a TA for them. Interesting. Up against a Shadow Fiend, TA definitely can hold her own and do very well in that lane, if given the proper space. And right now, Eventual Spirit, probably not enough to actually kill off that TA. And if it is an explosive hero, could do wonders for Lunatics, and maybe just a, the amount of tempo control and early fighting potential that they needed for their lineup. Well then, let's see, for Boreal, as far as what they need for their team, their first couple picks are all very self-contained and can function pretty nicely just by themselves. They are lacking an offlaner, and what that's actually going to be is still yet to be seen. Tidehunter could be a nice choice, but instead they'll settle on the Ancient Apparition. It is going to be shutting down to a certain extent, the Voodoo Restoration coming out from the Witch Doctor, Doom Scorched Earth, and a potential mechanism coming out from Ajikiro if he is going to be put in that farming role. So in that sense, it's going to work nicely for Boreal and is also going to pretty much ensure that their tri-lane wins. Eventual Spirit plus AA and then throw in any hero. It really is hard to find fault in that. Chilling Touch is just such an amazing tool to have at your disposal, and Squishy Heroes, especially that Witch Doctor. If he's caught out alone with Chilling Touch damage, it's not going to be long while he's uh, on the map. Tidehunter ban from Lunatics, I quite like it, would have synergized nicely with what Boreal have, just giving him some nice AoE teamfight control, as well as a little bit of extra minus armor, which can't be underestimated. Ventral Spirit, Shadow Fiend, and the Gush from Tidehunter would have added quite a lot of bonus damage for their team that they could be used very heavily. For Lunatic's last pickup, it kind of feels like they are going to go for another support, but Boreal are going to ban out that Brewmaster, and it would have been very annoying for them. Right now, although BKBs are probably going to come out from the Troll and Shadow Fiend, at some point, Brewmaster would pretty much force them to go for that very early on, and not exactly something you want to deal with, and would have been very disruptive for them, so I can definitely understand why they'd want to ban him out for Lunatic's last pickup. This is going to be interesting, at least for me. This is kind of what needs to tie their draft all together. Right now, they don't really have that single focus or exact plan of what they need to do throughout this game. And we'll have to see if that's going to come out with this last pickup for them. And it will solidify their lanes as well. For now, I think it's just going to be off lane Doom. Mid Templar Assassin safe lane farming Jakiro and maybe go for some sort of dual lane in the off lane with that Doom. Or it could be completely wrong and they're just going to run his support Jakiro. It does have that flexibility when you pick up that hero early on. If you want to change focus away from it. Well then, 20 seconds on the timer for Lunatic Esports. We'll have to see what they settle on as this fifth. They really kind of need this Doom to build into auras. I think Vlad's and AC are definitely going to be on the table with that minus armor coming out from the Shadow Fiend and Venge especially. Slug. It's going to be a Slark last for them. So in fact, it is going to be a support Jakiro hero. And well, Slark, it's going to be something that's annoying for Boreal to deal with. Although they have some amounts of lockdown with Eventual Spirit as well as Cold Feet to lock him in place, Slark can very easily disjoint the sun coming out from Venge, and Cold Feet not reliable in any means, so I think the Slark pick is definitely warranted. Boreal Esports will snag up the clockwork last. A nice amount of global ganking potential coming out from them, and an offlaner that they in particular like running. Should be interesting. As far as the drafts, I do still favor Boreals, but... As far as individual play is concerned, Templar's Assassin and Slark definitely could snowball themselves to victory, and there's no means, or by no means, are Lindix counted out of this. Unfortunately, they are going to have one of their players be disconnected, at least for the first couple seconds of this game. So I'll go ahead and introduce the Boreal side of the map. We're going to have 747 playing on the Troll Warlord, KVH on the Clockwork, Chuan on the Ancient Apparition, Tiburon on the Shadow Fiend, and Monster on the Vengeful Spirit. On the Radiant side, Lunatic are going to have Okidoki on the Witch Doctor, Naruto, Naruto on the Templar Assassin, Sonic on the Jakiro deal, on the Slark leaving last but not least, Saxodog on the Doom. 
As far as these lanes shape up for both sides, we're probably just going to see some pretty standard stuff coming out from Boreal. Although they could go aggressive, I don't think they really need to. You might as well just uh, use your pulls while you can. And although the Clockwork's not going to be getting that much, he should be able to at least get his levels up and get a level 6 at a decent click. And then he can start looking for kills with some assistance coming out from these supports. Alrighty then. They can switch things up a little bit. They might actually want to throw the Troll Warlord mid versus the Templar Assassin. That mischance is very annoying for TA to deal with. And one of the few heroes that can threaten TA with a man fight. And I think that might be a little bit better for them. And then give Tiburon a little bit of safe lane farm. Although levels on Shadow Fiend are very important. Don't get me wrong. It can be remedied by Midas if he wants to go down that path. Or just get that extra farm in the safe lane. I don't think it really is sacrificing much at all. And I... I think that would be a pretty decent way of going about it for Boreal. They do have aggressive potential if they want to go for that, but I think that might be a little bit too risky for them. I think just going for the... getting the farm on the Troll Ward, at least trading even in that lane, getting good farm on the Shadow Fiend in the safe lane, and throwing Clockwork towards the off is the best course of action for them. Lunatic probably don't have the same aggressive potential that Boreal do, and I don't think that they're going to be looking to do that either, um, but we'll just have to see. The contention for the early boundary runes could be something fun to watch, but as far as killing potential, I think it's going to be one of these offlaners, probably the Doom. Unfortunately for Saxodog, he can very easily get out of position on that top lane, and the power of Chilling Touch at those early levels never ceases to amaze. It's quite impressive. We do have Saxodog reconnected back into the game, so hopefully we'll be able to start back up and get into it very quickly. All right, then. I have no idea what we're waiting for or what's actually going on. Hopefully it won't be too long. Okie dokie is not okie dokie. We do have the go, and, well, it should be all ready. We're going to have 747. Give the good go. And that is going to be GLHF on both sides, and off to the races. Boots first on this Jakiro. Hmm. Actually loading out with no regen. Other than a handful of clarities, looks like he'll just get a couple of pool tangos towards his name. Where are they actually going to throw Sonic here? on this Jakiro. Boots first are pretty nice to have on that hero just because he lacks the mobility very early on. One of the slowest heroes, especially considering his abysmal turn rate. We'll just have to see. Interesting enough, it's also a stout shield on the Templar Assassin. With there being a ranged hero, it's not something you're used to seeing, but my helper trade hits with the Shadow Fiend a little bit more effectively if that is going to be a matchup. And it looks like Tiburon is going to be leading the helm in the mid lane. For the team. Bottom rune being sat on very aggressively by Boreal. You might just yet see the power of Chilling Touch at these early levels. Magic Missile into Chilling Touch, even though Clock isn't the best hero to abuse that, it's more than serviceable. They should be able to secure this or maybe even threaten First Blood, even on a target like the Slark. Although, they'll probably be able to pounce away. It's going to be close. They haven't shown themselves yet. The pings come out from the Slark and they're going to back off here. They just don't want to risk it up and top in the meantime. It's going to be Troll fighting against the TA and the Doom. Looking for the Paralyzing Gas going to bounce back and forth from Schwann and KVH. Ice Path going to connect onto two as well. The Chilling Touch has been applied and TL is going to be able to leap away. No! Not going to disjoint that last auto attack. It's going to be First Blood drawn by the Vengeful Spirit. They won't be able to chase for any more, but still a big win for Boreal. Especially considering Ancient Apparition getting that bounty rune for themselves. Nothing but wins across the map. TA does secure the bounty rune for Lunatic, so it's not all bad for them, but still Boreal can be out with a edge, and that damage is not something that you can mess with. Even on a Slark, I thought he might be okay, but just not going to be the case. It was close, but not quite for a deal here, and he's going to be starting off on the back foot. Although after that first blood, the supports aren't going to be sticking around the lane. This is some extra help that Clockwork definitely would like to have. He's going to start abusing the creep equilibrium by throwing a couple over in the sidelines, just to ensure that they push in the wave. Although this can be punished slightly by the Jakiro with Liquid Fire thrown every once in a while. He skilled up Ice Pass first, and that is something that Clockwork is privy to, so the tower damage is going to be negligible, and more than anything, this is just going to secure your clocks in nice early levels, which is going to be grand for KVH. Sex Dog currently only dealing with the Vengeful Spirit solo, and although this is slightly annoying for him, it's nothing too terrible. He didn't get a creep ability at level 1. Not uncommon. Let's see, was there anything actually available to him? No, it looks like he blocked out that large camp with his Observer Ward. I think you probably shouldn't do that as an offlane Doom. Just having access to any of those large camps could be great, but he might be caught out in a the corner. There's your Magic Missile with the Chilling Touch damage. Saxodog 
is completely screwed. There's nowhere for him to run. 747 going to secure that secondary kill for Boreal up in the top lane. Things just really don't get much better than this. Maybe you secure the bounty run over the TA. But outside of that, it's looking really grand for them. Especially since their Shadow Fiend is really wrecking mid lane. Holy cow. 7-7 seven and seven up against the TA. I was not expecting this opener. And... There's actually just not much that the TA can do at this point. The early advantage the TA might have in this lane is generally about the early damage. And although if Shadow Fiend isn't very good at taking off those defensive refraction charges, and you can eat the raises by yourself right now, this advantage for Tiburon really needs some sort of rotation in from Lunatic to actually help him out. And Naruto is going to be dropped pretty darn low, and if he's not careful, might even give up his life, especially without mana for another refraction. He is going to find that yet again, and is going to have the bottle coming out shortly, but... It's scary for the TA. I wasn't expecting this landing stage to go so poorly for Lunatic. Troll free farming up top, Shadow Fiend farming in mid, even the Clockwork having a good time. 10 and 1 in the bottom lane. He might be isolating out Sonic, looking over towards the trees. He might be able to isolate him inside some cogs, although this is a no battery assault build from KVH. So I don't think the killing potential is necessarily there, but he's still doing just fine. Boreal are really primed for a. Uh, Smooth sailing game, even though it is only two and a half minutes, or, yeah, two and a half minutes into the end game timer. They do need to be careful, especially on this clock. He can get chain stunned, and if he's not careful, brought down. But with Tranquil Boots, he should be able to sustain through most of the harass coming out from Lunatic. We'll just have to see. What do they have to do to break themselves out of this funk? I think it's going to rely on some early rotations. Maybe they look to kill off Tiburon in the mid lane, or maybe they get a lucky rune, or... Even yeah, just wait for level 6 on the Templar Assassin, which is soon incoming, I suppose, to maybe make something happen across the map. The Doom, currently at level 3, looks like he's going to head off towards the jungle. This is pretty par for the course for your Dooms, heading towards the offlane. Although he does like getting a couple early levels, first it can be very problematic. We do have Lunatic going for a smoke rotation coming out from Okidoki, as well as from Sonic, and they're going to try to put an end to Shadow Fiend's Reign of Terror inside this mid lane. Let's see if they're going to be able to accomplish this. They have level 2 on the Jakiro and level 2 on the Witch Doctor. All the aggressive skills are set up for them, and let's see if Shadow Fiend is going to get a little too comfortable. Clockwork probably has flagged that the supports are missing, and is bringing some supports himself over towards the mid lane, so we might be having some amount of a scuffle brewing. But is it actually going to break out, I wonder? It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Vengeful Spirit going to be walking in from the north. Spot eyes onto the Doom. Saxodog picks up the Bounty Rune, activates the Scorched Earth, and now going to turn into the Vengeful Spirit. The Venge does have an Ancient Apparition Reserve, and with the Chilling Touch damage, now a fight that they should be comfortable taking. And for now, that Smoke Rotation coming out from Lunatic, although I like the idea behind it, doesn't actually accomplish much for their team. And leaving the Slark uh, solo versus the Clockwork is going to give AVH a lot more room that you usually don't get as a Clock. At this point, Clockwork is finding himself... At a decent advantage, they are going to look towards mid, they are going to ping out Tiburon, now they bring in the Ice Path as well as the Concussive Shot, or Paralyzing Cascade, excuse me, they are going to connect with the Ice Path, but Haste Rune on Tiburon means that he's going to be A-OK, -okay. Bottle Charges and a Tango, and he's going to be right back in fighting shape. Flare going to fly through in the mid lane, but doesn't actually do much of anything. Again, the Witch Doctor and Jakira not able to connect with that crucial gank, and they're sacrificing their bottle lane too. So are going to be able to salve up here. And keep himself inside this lane, but right now he's at a severe level disadvantage, and KBH is almost at that crucial level 6 for the Clockwork. A little bit of a lag spike there, but hopefully that doesn't affect the players at all. And hopefully we'll be able to just continue on. Vengeful Spirit going to be sending out her way just a handful of words as Boreal look to control the map a little bit more. And there you have it. Right now, Boreal find themselves at a very early lead, although I don't usually look at the net worth graph so early on, it's... More than 3,000 net worth advantage towards their team, and similar graph in the experience, although not as much. But still, 2,000 is nothing to scoff at at less than 6 minutes into the game. Templar Assassin is starting to pick up a little bit more farm than the Shadow Fiend. With a little bit of pressure applied from the supports, it's not to be underestimated. Tiburon has been drawn away from the creeps a little bit, and... Templar Assassin, once you do get level 5 and get those 3 points up in the refraction, you can do quite a bit more. Interesting that Naruto hasn't actually gone in any points into Meld. Yeah, I suppose it's nice. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with this, although you aren't going to have that Invis to help you escape. Most people that are ganking ATA are going to have some semblance of detection. Illusion Rune, spotted out by Clockwork down towards the bottom lane, going to sit on it for the Shadow Fiend. And as far as KVH's build is concerned, he will be going for a Blade Mail. Clockwork is 
going to find a lot of targets that really don't want to have to deal with the blade mail on the clock, although TA can somewhat deal with it with the refraction. It's just going to be annoying, especially since this item is coming out so quickly. He might be able to get a kill down towards bottom if he's able to isolate out the <clears throat> Witch Doctor and now bring in the Vengeful Spirit in the back lines. Maybe there's even more killing potential. We'll just have to see where they're going to open up. The Vengeful Spirit is not in the guise of smoke, but is in reserve. Pinged out by the Jakiro. They know she's there. And they do need to give KVH quite a wide berth. But in the meantime, Troll been left in a 1v0 lane, 50 and 17. Not to be unexpected. This is a free farm troll. Really can't ask for much else. He has a Helm of Dominator already completed, and that early Roshan is going to be coming out very shortly for them. Interesting build coming out from the Troll. No ulti at 6, and completely maxing out the Berserker's Rage. I suppose since you are just sitting in the lane by yourself, why not? Absolutely, why not? TP and mid coming out from Sonic. The Jakiro is going to come into the middle lane just for a little bit more. They free up the Ancient Apparition, get some levels as Shadow Fiend farms up his stack, and are going to send the Doom back up towards top as lane is pushing in. But right now, we're just in for a really passive state of the game. The Clockwork, even though he got a level 6 at a very early time for an offlaner, hasn't actually been able to connect with anything. Power Treads on the Shadow Fiend does have a decent amount of stats to back himself up, and is going to be doing just fine. With this early helm, however, the troll is able to pretty much freely farm away inside the jungle, and this is going to give the supports a lot of space, and the Ancient Apparition in particular is going to really enjoy getting level 6 in an early click. Down towards bottom, action is KVH is going to be able to get Cogs on to deal, hookshot onto the ult and Slark, and battery assault to finish him off. Well executed kill onto that safe lane farm, and now they look towards the Jakiro. Magic missile cooling down in five seconds. Will they actually be able to find this Jakiro? It's going to turn for a nice path that does connect. Wave should be enough to kill off the Jakiro if it connects, and there you have it. Vengeful Spirit going to be able to secure the kill 0 to 4 as Boreal finds themselves at a huge advantage. Clockwork is holding on that hook shot and finds himself a nice opportunity, isolating the Slark. In fact, they didn't even need the hook shot to initiate. Looks like he was just catching the Slark a little bit out of position and hook shot onto the Invis Slark to jam it in. They'll be able to bring that kill home. Mid lane action, potentially a Bruin as they slow up Tiburon with the trap and haste rune again for Tiburon. It's going to keep him safe, and honestly, you probably need to be checking that bottle a little bit more liberally before you look for that kill, even with the paralyzing cask and the Jakiro's ice pad landing on the Shadow Fiend. With a haste rune, you're probably not killing him off. Tiburon's going to be just fine, and looks like it's going to be the mech build for Tiburon this time around. Into the Roshan pit, Boreal are going to go with 747, farming up the jungle over in the sidelines. It doesn't look that suspicious, and now they have the ma Minus Armor from Venge, from her Medallion, and her Wave, and Roche is going to be falling very quickly, and Lunatic are in no position to actually defend against this, even if they know it's going on. It doesn't really feel like they want to fight it. Doom is currently up towards top with no mana for his namesake spell, and this is going to be given the way of Boreal very cleanly. They're finding just so much out of the entire map, and really, Lunatic aren't doing much about it. I don't really feel like they can do much about it. 747 is an absolute beast right now, and fighting him is really difficult, unless you commit pretty much everything, but if you commit everything to a troll, then you're going to have a Shadow Fiend running around rampant, and you also have a troll who's sitting on an Aegis, which is also nothing to scoff at. Ancient Apparition going to find his level 6 up towards the top in that free lane that I was talking about a little bit earlier. So we do have that global potential coming out from the Ice Blast from the Ancient Apparition as well as the Clockworks hookshot ganking potential. A lot of tools that Boreal could use to fight, but then again they could also just wait for the next round of items. I think once this mechanism is completed for the Shadow Fiend, that's when things start kicking into high gear for them. And when they actually start to look aggressively for these towers. Even though they have had a significant advantage, they actually haven't taken much uh, tower control away from the enemy team. KVH potentially being wrapped around upon by the Templar Assassin. Although killing off this clockwork is easier said than done. This is a hero sitting at 14 armor, and even with the minus armor coming out from the TA, his physical resistance is going to be through the roof, and not something to be underestimated. They look up towards top as Doom is going to ping out Juan. They're not bringing any backup, however, for the Doom, and with the... Pressure of TP support, actually KBH going to get pounced upon by the Slark. Flare not flying through, KBH in a bit of a pickle. He does have Avenge behind him, going to be swapped out as they Magic Missile onto the Chiro. Ice Blast flies through, they do kill off the Slark, and Ice Blast wasn't even necessary for the 
slug kill and they'll get the ancient apparition after the fact. Templar is going to be bounced back by the cogs as KVH is still uh, surviving, my goodness. Bounce back double on the cogs coming out from Naruto. They do get a long range paralyzing gas and that should be the end of the clockwork's life. One more side blade going to do him in, but then again they bring in the troll. Which doctor going to bite the dust? Naruto going to meld together, trying to turn onto this vengeful spirit, going to drop the medallion. And now going to get bashed. Naruto with that maxed out in the Berserker's call. That bash is going to last for quite a long duration. Ice Path to try and disengage as Templar Assassin does get herself a little bit further away from Boreal and their scary troll. Going to turn back in the Berserker's <clears throat> form and now going to throw some ranged axes to slow down Naruto. No mana to actually put up that refraction. 747 fast enough. It doesn't look like it. They bring a deal from the sidelines. Now they have Tiburon. He's going to get bashed and that's the end of Slark's life. Double raise down by the Shadow Fiend. And now 747 is not done yet. This troll warlord has blood in or on his mind oh my goodness not sure i was going with that okie dokie is not going to be okie dokie ray is going to miss but it doesn't matter they'll just click him down that's a double kill for tiburon as boreal clean house down the bottom lane doom in the meantime dies to the clockwork with some help coming out from schwan and things are just falling off the rails for lunatics team i don't really see where they're going with this ice path on too but that doesn't help. That's triple kill for Tiburon. Jakiro just wanted a little bit of peace and solace inside the trees, but he can't even find it. Naruto up towards top. We're going to be hunting on this Templar Assassin, and even though her team's behind, there is some potential for kills, especially even find out this Ancient Apparition. But it looks like Schwan is some free. His DA can't actually go that deep with no vision in the enemy woods. Just a little too scary for them. Still two minutes duration on the Aegis coming out from Boreal, and they'll use this duration to take a Tier 1 tower down in the bottom lane. Not much that they can actually do to stop this lunatic this tier one tower looks like it's more or less completely forfeit troll just going to be bashing away at that one and it's going to be completely gone 747 1200 gold in his pocket and there's that mechanism flying out to the shadow fiend whenever he wants it in fact 747 is actually committed to a yasha maybe with that yasha he would have been able to chase down the hero's solo that little bit of extra movement speed goes a long way when you're dealing with the troll warlord Alrighty then there's those two key items for Boreal, and they're not going to stop the push here. Two-two tower and bottom, why not? They have the ultimate coming out from the troll if they need it, and they're going to pop it and go to town. Although the glyph is going to delay for a lunatic, troll has already got up his max burger stacks, and he'll just go chop, chop, chop away. Fight on the meantime in the middle lane. His is going to be cleaned up by the clock, where TP Temple Schwan is going to succeed. Naruto with that Hastrin is not able to actually secure any kills, although it looks like he's going to survive as well. They bring in the Doom. Looks like Saxon Dog going to look for the clockwork, and KBH looks like he's completely screwed. Going to be doomed up, slowed down by a psionic trap, and it looks like he's going to be completely gone. They'll blast him with the Seder mines or with the uh, Seder blast from Saxon Dog. And that's going to be end his life. 2 to 12, but in the meantime, they lose the tier 2 tower, but at least they get something in return, I suppose. Things are still looking grim for Lunatic. They'll put some pressure on a tier 1 tower in mid, but Lunatic just aren't keeping up with the farm coming out from Boreal. It's looking really scary for them. Shadow Fiend, sitting on quite a large chunk of gold, could probably go for whatever item wants. They spot out Okie Doki in the sidelines. One click, two click, one raise, and that's going to be it. Naruto going to get magic missiles up, and the refraction charges are all but gone. My goodness, that damage coming out from Boreal is immense. That's going to be an easy two kills for them. And although they lose their clockwork previously, it's... Not something that lunatic can, lunatic can actually feel comfortable with. Or even really do anything off of that pickoff. They don't even get a tier 1. That really shows the position that they're in this game. Slark is sitting on PT's Orb of Venom as well as Spring of Aquila. And although these items might have been nice 7 minutes ago, right now it just doesn't cut the cake for them. Smoke up coming out from Boreal. So let's just farm up in their ancient stack. And even more gold acceleration for the team entirely. You have a double damage rune up towards top. I really feel like Lunatic need to scare this or else they're just going to be ripped to shreds. The uh, Troll and Shadow Fiend with a double damage rune, it's really, really scary. Okay then, the item of choice for the Shadow Fiend is going to be Blink Dagger. Can't knock it at all. Tiburon is currently the top net worth inside the game and this is really only going to help extend their lead, this Blink Dagger on the Shadow Fiend. Although sometimes it might not be the right choice when you're behind and you can't actually make anything happen with it. I think this game is definitely an exception, or not even an exception, but just a great time to have that extra mobility. Their chasing potential is through the roof. Right now, Clockwork farming inside the lane. There are some Lunatic heroes inbound, but I don't think taking a 
fight at all is really an option for them. Deal going to go over in the sidelines. He does have a TP and he's going to be forced to use it, but that's just 747 exerting his dominance in this game. Duver on the sidelines. They found the ancient apparition. Swap out from the bench. Going to buy some space. The clockwork isolates two inside the cogs. Okie dokie. Going to be dropped down. Shadowfiend pops one with a double damage rune. Rips him to shreds. Mega kill streak. They'll look for a pounce onto the Vengeful Spirit, but can't actually connect. The bench might still die, but the mechanism coming out from the SF. Still trying to run away. The Orb of Venom going to give them a little bit of chasing power. The cogs buying a little bit of space. She's still going to survive. Is Poryo pick up a treble kill for the Shadow Fiend? Tipperon is indeed wicked sick. 2 to 18. Lunatic find nothing in a 0 for 4 trade that the troll wasn't even involved in. 747 just been farming way down towards bottom. And although I suppose he did offer some extra help coming out from his ultimate. Yeah, I don't think it actually mattered. Double damage rune on Tiburon, backbreaking for Lunatic at this point, and really, it's it's GG. <laughs> they just can't do anything. They're going to call it here as we go into a game two and a dominating performance coming out from Boreal. We didn't get to see the Yule Scepter coming out from Tiburon, and that's a little sad. It's always fun to watch Yules up into the Requiem instant pop, but my goodness, what a impressive clockwork game coming out from Boreal. There just really wasn't an opening. For Lunatic Esports, and I hope in game number two they'll be able to find their drive, and maybe I can chalk this one up to poor draft, but it really felt like they got outplayed. Thanks for watching, we'll have game two of this JDL Best of Two series up shortly, so don't go anywhere, we'll have more Dota soon.